Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Teleclass Marine Science Grade 9. So, I am Shehnaz Lati from Ghazi School. So, here today I am going to start the topic classification. So, today as first topic I am going to introduce the topic classification. So, first we will look at what are the outcomes that we are going to try to achieve today. So, there are three major outcomes that I have taken. So, one is to classify organisms into different groups based on the shared features and describe the principles of classification based on kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus and species. And then the last understand the principles of dichotomous key for identification. So, now we will move on to introduction. So, first before we start we will look at the two main terms. So, the first term that I am going to introduce to you is taxonomy. So, taxonomy is an internationally accepted method of grouping organisms into different taxa or different phylums and then the people who do this work are called taxonomists. So, taxonomist the definition is they are the people who group organisms into different groups. So, in science in the taxonomy the scientist will classify organisms based on their shared features, the features that they can see from the organism. So, when classifying organisms the scientists usually they will be looking at the features of the organisms like the their appearance, their mobility, their reproduction and their functionality. But there are other ways that we can classify or group organisms other than the scientific classification. Here you can see some examples for uh, here usually I have taken examples from marine environment. So, for example, if you see some salmon. So, there may be different types of salmon, maybe some may be living in the specific ocean, the other may be living in the Atlantic ocean. So, here you can divide the fish according to the ocean where they are living. So, that is also one way we can identify or group organisms. And another example when you look at the fishes of the world, you can divide just into two groups just by saying one group is freshwater fish or the other group is the saltwater fish. That is also one way you can group organisms. Or another example again from marine environment. For example, here you can see the earth, the zones of the earth, the temperate zones of the earth. For example, the middle, the equatorial region we call it tropical region and then next to tropic we have the temperate and then polar. So, sometimes we even refer to organisms like tropical fishes means those are the fishes that can live only in the tropical area. They cannot survive in other areas. So, the same way there may be organisms that live only in the polar regions. So, they can live only in very cold environment. So, they are refers to refer to as polar fishes. So, there are a lot of ways that we can identify organisms or group organisms. However, as I mentioned previously the scientist is dividing organisms by looking at their features. And then by looking at the features when they are the taxonomist when they are classifying organism there is actually an order. So, this order start from the kingdom ok. So, this order is called the order of classification and this starts from the kingdoms. So, the kingdoms means there are lots and lots of organisms which has some basic similar features. For example, kingdom animalia means the all the animals, all the living things, the animal in the earth comes under kingdom animalia. 
and then when you go down to classification it ends with species species means there are very few organisms coming under same species so now let's look at the order of classification so the order of classification always starts with kingdom so next to kingdom always it should be the phylum class order family genus and then the last is species so you can't rearrange this order always the order should be same okay so it should always start from kingdom and it should end with species so this order you need to learn so there are certain ways that we used to learn this order so one way to remember the order is just by looking at the the first name of the order for example kingdom phylum class order family genus species so k p c o f g s like that so these letters to remember you can sometimes make mnemonics like this like king philips came over from great spain so if you can remember this sentence then you can very easily recall the order of classification and here is another example king philips came over for good soup so these are some easy ways that you can remember the order because as i previously say you can't rearrange the order it should be always the same way and here you can see how organisms are classified so one example is from the marine environment and other is a human being so first we will look at the man so when you start the classification of a human being so the kingdom is animalia as i told you all the animals including humans are coming under kingdom animalia and then comes the phylum so phylum is chordata all the organisms having backbones are coming under phylum chordata and then the class so we are class mammalia so that way it goes up to species so the last two names here the genus name and species name is actually the scientific name for that particular organism so if you are asked for example what is the scientific name for human so very easy it is homo sapiens so the scientific name for human is homo sapien so the same way here you can see a uh, tuna so the order of classification for tuna also start from kingdom so the kingdom is animalia again the phylum is chordata as i told you all the organisms having backbone are coming under phylum chordata so that way it goes up to genus and species but here you can see sub genus also there but usually it comes genus and species but there are in some groups sub genus like that sub class also comes okay but here the order should be this way because it is given in your textbook so you have to learn only kingdom phylum class order family genus species but sometimes you may see these things sub genus sub class sub phylum like that okay so here the scientific name for this tuna is tunas albacal so like that different organisms each and every organism has a scientific name so by using those scientific names we can identify the organisms if you want to find more information about the organism you can very easily search and find information and one more thing about the scientific name when you are writing a scientific name for an organism always the genus name should start with a capital letter and the species name should start with a simple letter so if you write the homo or the tunas in 
simple letter here, the starting letter, then it is wrong. So, always remember to write the starting letter a capital letter and the species name should be in italic form. Okay. So, here you can see it is in italic form here also, all the other parts are in normal way and the sepian is written in italic form. And then again when we move on we will look at some more terms. Okay. So, now we are going to look at how the organisms are grouped, how the scientists divide or how they are identifying organisms. So, before we start we will look at the taxonomic key. So, it is a simple tool used by the scientists to identify unknown organisms. All the organisms when first they see they are unknown organisms. So, by using this tool the taxonomic key the scientist or the taxonomist will identify the organism and there is a system. So, <coughs> where the organism is getting named. So, this system is called the binomial nomenclature. So, binomial usually by refers to two. So, in a binomial nomenclature all the organism should have two names. Previously, when I was explaining the order of classification also, I have mentioned about the genus name and species name. Actually, the binomial nomenclature is the system which is giving the organisms genus name and the species name. So, here you can see the same example, the human homo sapien and the skipjack tuna which is very abundant in Maldives, the scientific name for Skipjack tuna is Katsuonus pelamis and then comes the dichotomous key. So, dichotomous key leads to identification of organisms. For example, if you get five organisms a rabbit, a bird, a lizard, frog and a fish. So, how you identify or how the scientific identification goes on is first they will look at the features. For example, first they have looked at the outer covering of this organism. So, the first question, so here you are going to actually form some questions and then you are identifying it. So, first question is does it have hair or fur that is covering their body. So, if you look at these organisms only the rabbit is having hair or fur around its body. So, there are two answers yes or no. So, if it is no means again there should be another answer. So, if it is yes means out of these five only the rabbit. So, you can identify rabbit. So, then you are going to two. When you say no you go to two. So, in two it says does it have feathers. So, again to cover their body. So, out of these four, now already the rabbit is identified. So, now no need to look at rabbit. So, now we will look at the other four organisms. For example, only the bird is having feathers. So, bird is again identified and then no feathers means again it has to go to number three. So, now these two organisms already identified. Now, we are going with the other remaining three organisms. So, the next question is, is fertilization external or internal? So, out of these three organisms, <coughs> the external, <coughs> sorry, internal organism, <coughs> internal fertilization is found only in the lizard, the remaining two are having external fertilization. So, it means again the external should go to four. So, now the lizard is identified and when you go to four, does it have gills as an adult? During adult stage, which one is having gills? So, here the frog and tuna, uh, so frog and fish, only the fish is having gills at their adult stage. 
the frog will not have gills during the adult stage. So, that is how the scientists are identifying the organisms. you can see again one more example. So, how to identify fish? So, here actually we are going to identify the fish with the star only. So, when you get some organisms like this, all of these are different types of fishes. So, when you are going to identify, first you have to think and then you should think of a question how, what feature you can use to identify the organism. For example, if it is fishes means usually their body shape may differ, they have different number of fins, their caudal fin or the tail fin may be different, they might have different types of other fins. So, or uh, their eyes the position of their eye may be different. So, like that you have to think of a question to start the identification. So, in this one, the first question actually is, if fish shape is long and skinny, then go to two. Because when you look at all these fishes, there are some fishes which are long and skinny, other ones are not long and skinny in their body shape. So, only two fishes actually having a long and skinny body. The other ones are not having long and skinny body. So, then long and skinny, then you have to go to two. So, if the fish shape is not long and skinny, then go to three. It means other than these two fishes, all the other fishes need to go to three but these two fishes having long and skinny body, they should go to two. So, now we are taking these two fishes to number two. And number two, again now we have to look at only these two fishes. This time we cannot look at their body shape. This time we need to look at another feature. So, here if fish has pointed fins, we are looking at the fins. If the fish is having a pointed fin, it is a trumpet fish. So, the eel is not having any pointed fin, but if you look at this fish here, you can see pointed dorsal fin is there. So, very easily you can identify. So, it is a trumpet fish and the one which is not having the pointed fin. So, it is having smooth fins, it is the spotted moray eel. So, that is how you identify organisms and then here again you need to start with step 1. So, step 1 now already the first part we have identified, then we go to second part. If the fish is not long and skinny, then go to 3, means the remaining fishes this time you are taking to 3. So, step 3 says, if fish has both eyes on top of the head, 
then go to step 4. So, this way in this way you can actually identify all these fishes. I hope now you get at least some idea how the scientists are identifying organisms. So, now let us look at a video that helps you more on how the identification process goes on. Dichotomous key. There's a lot of birds in our world and if you were asked to identify a bird based on its characteristics, you could probably do it. We could probably name the hummingbird, the owl, the duck, and the penguin based on its features. But if you were asked to name these birds using their scientific name, the task wouldn't be so easy. You wouldn't know the scientific name of these birds just by looking at them. Scientists have figured out a way to make a chart to help you better identify birds based on their characteristics. The chart is called a dichotomous key. Reading a dichotomous key is easy. Take a look at the hummingbird. To use a dichotomous key, start at number one. At number one, it's asking us to observe the feet of the bird. A hummingbird does not have webbed feet, so we'll go to step three. Step three has us examine the bird's tufts. Our bird does not have tufts. We just figured out the scientific name. Let's try the dichotomous key again with a different bird. This time we have the penguin. Start at number one. Our bird has webbed feet. So we're going to have to go to step two. Step two has us count the number of toes. A penguin has four toes. We just figured out the scientific name of the penguin. Using the same chart, we can figure out the scientific name of the duck. Starting at number one, we see our bird has webbed feet, so we'll go to step two. We have to count the toes. A duck has three. We just figured out the scientific name again. Lastly, an owl. Always start at number one on the dichotomous key and look at the features of the organism you're trying to identify. Our bird has tufts. This is its dichotomous key scientific name. Dichotomous keys, charts that scientists use to figure out the scientific name of organisms or to help identify footprints. Dichotomous keys. Okay. So now it's almost the end of the lesson. So here I have some few works for you. So these works actually you can do at home and then you can show these answers to your teachers and then you can check. So the first thing that you can do is just to make a mnemonic for the order of classification. So as I have shown you previously two mnemonics. So, you can try yourselves to make your own mnemonic. So, then it will be much easier for you to learn this. And then here are some few questions that you can try at home. So, the first question is define the term classification and then binomial nomenclature. So, usually these questions when asking define the term means in all of our exam also the same way the questions appears. In marine science very often you will find questions like the define the term means you need to explain the meaning of that term. And the second question is differentiate between taxonomy and taxonomy. I hope you all now know what is meant by taxonomy and who are taxonomists. And then number three, give two reasons for classifying organisms. Why the scientists are classifying all the organisms? Two reasons. And number four, what are the two parts of, of an organism scientific name? And the last question, try to make a simple dichotomous key for five different fishes. 
you can just get pictures of five different fishes and then try to make a dichotomous key for those five fishes to identify those five fishes. So that is all and I hope you all understood what is classification and how the dichotomous, how the dichotomous key works. That is all. Thank you. Well,